Because he says here, here's what he says about them. That some shall depart from the faith. Okay, first off, how are they going to depart from the faith? Well, by giving heed to seducing spirits. Because there's going to be an increase of activity in the last days of demonic spirits. And the two primary areas of this increased demonic activity is going to be seducing spirits to seduce people away from the faith so that they will be lost. Do you understand? Well, uh, that can't happen because, you know, I'm securing him. Okay, okay well, I, I'm, I'm not condemning you. I'm not saying you can't, right? All right? I'm not saying you're not right with God. All I'm saying is you better make sure, right? Because if you have a wrong understanding, if you have a stronghold built up in your mind that you're right with God because you shook a preacher's hand, put your name on a card, raised your hand, or even said a prayer, you have a false security. Why? Because it's not what you say. It's how you live. So you can call yourself a brain surgeon. <laughs> but I ain't putting myself under your care. All right? Yeah. Right? Just because you say you're something don't mean you're something. So he says here, giving heed to seducing spirits and, so now, now notice, seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So there are seducing spirits that are going to bring doctrines whose purpose is to seduce people away from the faith so some will depart from the faith. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's right there in your own Bible, right? Now, some of the things they're going to be doing is they're going to be speaking lies in hypocrisy. And watch this. They're going to have their conscience seared with a hot iron. One of the things they're going to teach. Now, now all of these, these are just a, a wide variety of things. It doesn't mean one person's going to show up and teach all of these things. It means you could have four or five different people teaching these things. They're saying they're all seducing the one because it's doctrines, plural. Not one doctrine, doctrines. Right? The enemy's going to have a lot of different doctrines that he's trying to bring in. Now, <clears throat> one of the things they're going to try to get, try to make a doctrine is to forbid to marry. Okay? Another doctrine is commanding to abstain from meats. Now, I will not fall for that. <laughs> so just being honest with you, all right? So I know for a fact, if somebody comes to me telling me abstain from meats, get away. I'm, it's just, it, it ain't going to work on me, all right? So, which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Now, and there's all this kind of stuff going on. And it's amazing to watch because almost anything somebody does becomes a religion to them. At first, well, I'm doing this because it's healthier. Well, I'm doing this because it's more humane. And then, in a short period of time, it's a religion, and you're going to hell if you don't do it too. It's amazing. Why? Because a stronghold gets built in their mind. Now, so we're talking about Depart. So if a person can depart iniquity, they can depart righteousness. Just something to think about, right? We'll talk about it more later, maybe. Matthew verse, uh, chapter 22, verse 35. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him, Jesus, a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, how do you love your neighbor as yourself? Well, you could take the Ten Commandments and go down the list. Right? You could go down through and anything and talk about other people. I won't covet their goods. Right? Won't bear false witness. See, all of that's loving your neighbor. If you're not doing that, then okay. Then in Revelation chapter 3, verse 15, Jesus said this, I know thy works, that you are neither hot or cold nor hot. I, I would that you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I, Jesus, will spew thee, vomit thee, is what the word means, out of my mouth. Now, 
I don't know what you might think vomiting you out his mouth might be, but I can guarantee you it ain't him saying, well done. So the reason I'm bringing this up today is because there is so much. The word depart, when it's used, and you know the, uh, the Old Testament from the Hebrew was translated into Greek at one point. And so a lot of times to check the meaning of certain Greek words in the New Testament, a lot of scholars and theologians will go to the Septuagint to see how that word was used in the Old Testament and see what it was like. Well, the word used for depart is, it's a, it's a word, uh, aphihistomy, I think it is. And it's where we get the word apostasy. And the word, so it says when they will depart, they will apostatize from the faith, okay? And apostasy means apo, away from, and stasis means to stand. So to apostatize means to step away and stand away from something. So if you're going to apostatize of the, from the faith, that means you step away from the faith and you stand apart from it. Jesus said, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on the earth? Well, the word apostasy that we use as the word apostasy, in the Old Testament, it was the word used for divorce. So depart from the faith means to de somebody is filing for divorce. Now, God said he wouldn't necessarily. But you can and several times God talks about it, and especially in the Old Testament, but even in the New. So God will not hold you if you don't. It, no more, listen, God didn't make you get saved. He won't make you stay saved. Now, I'm not saying you can you know, kick a cat and all of a sudden you're doomed and going to hell. I'm not saying that. I'm saying you have to depart. You have to apostatize. You have to. Now, here's the thing. The way this works, and we're, we're going to talk about it more at a future date, I'm sure, but I want you to get a hold of this. It does not say they will reject the faith. It says they will depart. Reject means generally to hear and go, no. Mm, no, not doing it. That's rejected. Depart literally means to walk away from now, it doesn't even mean to run away from. You can depart gradually. See, you can't really reject gradually. Reject means no. But you can depart gradually. What does that mean? That means that at one time, you might have been on fire. But over time, over time, what? Now, and now listen, going to church don't save you. You know, going to this church or any other church doesn't save you. But there is, a, there is an attitude, there's a, a characteristic, that's a better word, a characteristic of departing. And that characteristic is, well, let, let me just give you the sum, uh, or a summary of it. If you were ever more on fire for God than you are today, you are backslidden and you have already started stepping away. As times Move forward. It says that we are to exhort one another even more and more as the day approaches. Why? Because as the day approaches, we're going to need exhortation more and more. Why? Because there are going to be doctrines of devils that come along to seduce us, to cause us to veer off the path. Paul talked about these people, people who have erred. And he said whenever, at the end, he said, no man stood by me. This person loved the world more than they did God. So all these things are part of the departing. Your mindset, your, the strongholds in your mind can cause you to depart. A root of bitterness can come up that will grow up and push out your love for God. And you can grow lukewarm, which is worse than hot or cold. Usually, you know, if I get cold, I'm going to go find something warm to put on. Why? Because I get cold and I know I'm cold. Lukewarm ain't like that. Lukewarm, you think you're okay. 
And sometimes lukewarm is, well, you know, but, I mean, I'm better than so-and-so. I mean, come on. You know, I'm nicer than them. I did this. And, you know, I was in church last Sunday, and they weren't even in church. And I know they were at home. I know they went to the lake or whatever. See, it's that kind of stuff. But you're comparing yourself against who you're not going to be compared to. 